up everyone matt here with down once more and it is time for another mini episode so i am going to do a trailer kind of reaction review for the wicked teaser trailer we got during the super bowl i meant to hop on here and record one right after that uh, things got crazy the past week and it's a rough weekend so I'm going to say. So you're getting it today. I've also got some brief thoughts on the Wonka movie. I finally got around to seeing that now that's out on digital. Um, and some updates on the future episodes of the podcast, what we'll be watching for next. So I'm going to dive right into it. Um, during the Super Bowl, um, which unfortunately the Kansas City Chiefs won. Now it's pulling for the Niners. But we got our first official look at the Wicked movie. Uh, it is set to come out Thanksgiving. We got a full one minute teaser which was better than i was expecting i was thinking we'd maybe just get a couple quick glimpses and it you'd maybe see alphaba putting on the hat or something and then that would be it and we wouldn't really get to see the world because it's still almost a year away not quite and uh in theory it's the first part of two movies that they're splitting into two that's when it was first announced that's what it was doing the first part comes out this year thanksgiving the next part comes out next year on thanksgiving but i don't know if that's still the case because this teaser was just billed as wicked it didn't say wicked part one it didn't say anything like that and it seemed to show things at least based on the musical that would happen towards the end game of said movie so i don't know if they decided as they were shooting and now where they're in the process of editing if they're like well we can really do this in one movie um i i have mixed feelings on this either way when they first announced it i was worried they were going to throw in a bunch of random stuff and it was going to lose some of its impact but the more time has gone on and where the cast was announced and where they're extremely ta talented um, and Steven Schwartz's involvement has been known and they're coming up with new songs for it. The more excited I got for it to be broken down into two movies. And so I don't know. I, I could see this going either way. I could see it being good or bad either way. If they throw in a bunch of unnecessary filler, um, and just kind of cliche songs, it seems like they're fishing for the best original song, uh, Oscar on there then that could fall flat. If they'd give us if they give us two hour and a half movies, I'm gonna be pissed. Just give us a three hour movie in that case. Don't make us wait a year to see the end. But if we get two two hour movies, a little over two hour movies, then I'm all for it. Let's see more of this world. Let's flesh out some of those characters that get rushed in the musical. Um but if they do that, if they split into two movies and then cut out some of the key moments from the musical, then I'm going to be mad. Because in my mind, the reason you split it into two is so that you can faithfully adapt everything from the musical. You can keep all the important bits in and you don't have to cut anything. You're not getting studio pressure for anything like that. So we'll see what happens there. It could just be the first teaser that they're show teasing the entire saga, if you will. So getting into the trailer itself we see a lot of very wide scale, wide shots showing the scope that this movie is going to do, everything John M. Chu is going to. And we know from some of the leaked set photos that there had been out there that he really wanted to do, he did so many practical effects with this. Um, like there's a shot in the trailer of running through tulip fields and they got so many, I think it was something like 9 million tulips that they did. Now there's obviously some CGI in that scene in the background and everything, but they got a ton of real tulips. And I think John M. Chu is very dedicated to making this world feel real and magnificent and majestic. And so I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the scope I still think that there were moments in the trailer, and like I said, we're almost a year out from release. We're nine months out, over nine months out from release. So there's still obviously going to be more polishing up. Uh, but polishing up was the wrong choice of words because I feel like this trailer almost looks too polished. The world looks too pristine, too perfect, if you will. And I don't know. With, with all the lens flares, there's so many things with the new modern technology, the sharper, crisper versions of everything we get. I feel like the faker, which is poor choice of words, but everything just looks kind of off. It doesn't matter. I know there's the whole thing with the motion smoothing. If you turn motion smoothing on while you're watching everything, you're a psychopath. Um, 
you need a little bit of that that blur. You need to, the natural. I saw some videos of people going like 60 FPS for Revenge of the Sith scenes, and it just looks so jarring. But I don't know. I'm very excited for this movie. It was set with notes from Defying Gravity in the background, and Cynthia Revo sounds absolutely fantastic um, as Alphaba. I'm very excited to hear her in this role. I, I'm curious when we get to see her some of Ariana Grande singing because she has a lot more of a poppy sound than necessarily a musical theater sound so i'll be curious to see how her singing as glinda actually sounds there's something about her just looks off to me i don't know if it's the combination of the pink with the pale and the blonde hair and like it's blonde blonde not yellow blonde which i guess is fitting but i don't know something about it just seems looks off it's throwing me off but i know she is a fantastic actress she's a fantastic fantastic singer so i'm sure she's going to do fantastic uh we got to see a lot of michelle yo as madame morrible glimpses of her we got to see jeff goldblum as the wizard a decent number of times in this teaser we also got to see a quick glimpse of Dorothy, Tin Man, Scarecrow, and the Cowardly Lion in front of the wizard in the trailer. We got a quick glance at uh, Jonathan Bailey as Fiero with Elphaba. And then we also got a very brief glance uh, that looks like, if you're familiar with the musical, my guess is it's from Dancing Through Life, the part when they're at the Ozdas Ballroom, because you see uh, Elphaba putting on the hat. And that was the main focus of the shot in the trailer. But in the background, you can see her sister, her sister Nessa Rose in the wheelchair. You can see Box standing behind her. So that's the one glimpse we get at that guy that I'm blanking on his name. That was SpongeBob SquarePants and is now divorced and dating Ariana Grande. All that fun personal drama that's been going on behind the scenes of the show. So I really liked, I saw some people kind of coming for it i really liked cynthia revo's take at the end of defying gravity like the the war cry when the you're never going to bring me down oh whoa i'm not going to attempt to sing it because it's going to be bad but i really like how they close out the trailer with that and her flying i thought that was awesome visual we gotta see a lot of flying monkeys in this trailer too tons of them see a quick glance glance of glinda in the bubble um i don't know for a teaser trailer for this still being nine months out I'm excited about this. I'm excited to see more. I, I've always been big on trailer spoil too much of the movies. But now where I know the plot of this and I know what's going on, I, I don't care. Give me all of it. Give me all the little nuggets that I can get before this movie releases on Thanksgiving so I can get pumped for it. Um, I am going to be curious to see with Jeff Goldblum as the wizard. I think he is a fantastic actor. Uh, I think he will be good for... His voice and how he is, I think he's going to be very good for the Wizards songs. I am going to be very curious if they go the route of the book and make the wizard very dark. Um, eh, very dark is the wrong word. But there are some things that happen in the book that are only slightly hinted in the play that's kind of fucked up. And so I'll be curious if they incorporate that into the movie or if they try to keep it more lighthearted. Like I mentioned when I first it, talked about this movie, uh, Wicked itself, the book is very political. And the, the musical has some of those themes, but everything going on in the land in the book is insane. It'll be interesting if they incorporate that more. We do see um, Elphaba touching some yellow bricks. That's something that is discussed more in the book and it's hinted at and mentioned briefly in the musical from what I can remember about the yellow brick road being constructed and everything going on with that. And it's not a fully fleshed out road that has just existed for eternity in the world of this. So I'm excited. Uh, this did up my excitement level for the musical. Uh, now that I've seen the stage production, I wasn't as like yearning for this movie as I was before when I just like, I want to see all these songs sung performed. I want to see this played out. I've seen it on stage now, so I'm not like as dying for the movie adaptation. However, this trailer made me really excited. I'm really excited to see Cynthia Revo's Alphaba, uh, and I'm just I'm pumped for this movie. I still I have not seen a casting announcement for Doctor Dillamund, so 
I hope they don't cut out Dr. Dillamund. That would be odd. Um, Because that is another thing. When we see Dorothy, Tin Man, Scarecrow, Cowardly Lion in front of the wizard, the lion is just a regular lion sitting there. That's fine. Uh, One of the main premises in both the book and the musical for Wicked is the animals being able to talk. They're standing upright and then eventually losing their voices because of things going across the land, trying to say that basically animals are less than. That's where some of the political themes come in. Um, And Dr. Dillamund is one of those professors at Shiz University that was very influential influential on Alphaba when she gets there and he starts losing his ability to speak, getting imprisoned, sent off and everything. And so, I don't know. We'll see. I haven't seen any casting and I didn't catch in this trailer besides the flying monkeys and the cowardly lion sitting there any animals. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. If they do incorporate that in the musical, I feel like it's a key, a key part of the, the main themes around wicked. So I hope they leave it in, but we'll see in November or maybe future trailers. Okay. Now I mentioned at the beginning, I finally got around to watching the Timothy Chalamet Wonka movie. I didn't really know what to expect going into this. I knew from the trailer we had some notes of the songs from the original Gene Wilder, uh, Willy Wonka, and the Chocolate Factory. Charlie and the... No, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was the Johnny Depp one. Willy Wonka, um, the Gene Wilder one. So we had the Oompa Loompa song. We had the Pure Imagination song, hints and notes in the trailer. And so... This, I would describe, we're going to do a full review in the podcast eventually. So just some initial thoughts. This is a prequel soft reboot, uh, kind of, because it's not directly connected to the Gene Wilder one. It's heavily, I don't know the right word to say. It. A lot of the songs, the notes, the score, you get those homages to it. You get those kind of those memories, those connecting threads to it, but Slugworth, completely different vibe, character. Uh, It's a lot more lighthearted in this. The Wonka movie is a lot more for kids than I feel like even the original one with Gene Wilder was. There's parts in that one, like when they're going through the tunnel and then there's the giant insect and everything like that. That That's a kid. Freaked me out about that movie. Great movie overall. Um, The Pure Imagination song... Timothy Chalamet did a really good job. That was never one of my favorite songs. I just, it's a good song. It's fine. Uh, I never loved it. The music in Willy Wonka, besides the Oompa Loompa songs, were, the Oompa Loompa ones were the big ones for me. The others were just, eh. Uh, From what I remember, I have not watched the the original movie in probably 15 years. So eventually, we'll do a review on that. Maybe we'll do a Wonka month, where we'll do the original, we'll do Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and we'll do Wonka. Not Wonka month, that'd be a Wonka quarter, um, because we do three of them. So, we'll see. I I think kids would love this movie. I felt like it was a lot more targeted towards kids than the original was. My parents, who loved the original movie, and they were the ones that introduced me to it, obviously, they were, I watched it with them, they came over, they were big fans of it, they gave it five stars, Uh, I'm sitting more to three, three and a half on it, so... I don't know. That's all I'm going to say about Wonka for now, and we'll do a full review on it eventually in the future. Um, Okay, so next up for the podcast in the upcoming weeks, uh, Brad and I are going to be reconvening, and we are going to be updating our top five musical songs since we released that unreleased episode from 2021. A lot of things have changed since then, some tastes. We've both seen, listened to a lot more musicals, so we will be discussing that. We're going to be doing an update draft on there. Brad has um, a new segment that he is pitching and we're going to try, so I said I'm going to be surprised going into it, so who knows what that'll be. Hopefully it'll be something fun, enjoyable, and that's going to do it. I don't have anything else for this episode. Just stay tuned for the upcoming weeks. Uh, I've got some traveling overseas coming up. I'm going to try to pre-record episodes. If I'm not able to, I'll put something out on our Instagram page. So stay posted on our social media. But And like I said, 
comment on our videos, message us, give us ideas for drafts you want to see, um, different lists you want us to do like we've done before. We've done top five. We actually haven't done it, but I keep having it on a thing that we need to do, like top five pizza toppings, like build the perfect pizza. Like what kind of crust are you going with? Are you going with thin? Are you going with pan? Are you going with hand toss? Are you going with stuffed crust? What you doing? Sauce, meats, veggies, whatever random stuff. I think that would be fun, but we'll see. Give us ideas. Tell us what you want to see. Thank you, as always, for listening. Hope you enjoyed this truly mini episode. Wicked coming out this Thanksgiving. So stay tuned for that and enjoy the 30 plus episodes between now and then. So hope you're doing well. Hope you all remembered Valentine's Day. Stay sweet and don't forget to go down once more. Later. Later.